Good morning on this Saturday. Um, I am going to uh, see if I can make a Saturday broadcast a regular thing. And Saturdays, again, are, at least in my mind, attached to cartoons. There used to be Saturday morning cartoons when I was a kid growing up. So time for a Saturday cartoon. Today we're going to... Uh, we're going to be finishing a T-Rex that I started last week. So let me get my screen set up here. And join in, make comments. Oh, I've got to shut down a couple things here. There we go. And... Well, oops. There. Okay. So this is the T-Rex that I started drawing last week. And so we've got our fairly mm, fairly tight pencils, if you want to call it that. Even though I didn't use a, a real pencil pencil. The lines that I used to make to um, guide me as I'm going to do some inks now are there. I'm going to make a couple changes first, though, before I uh, launch into doing some inks. I think maybe I'll increase the size of this foot. Make some edits. And I think that will help match the other, uh, the other foot a little better than it was. And... Um, See, being a Saturday morning, my uh, my family has just gotten up, so you'll hear the real sounds of life here at the Letha household. Um, my dog may run around. You'll hear the clinking of his uh, his collar and such. All right, so I think that works for me. And now we're gonna knock back the um, the opacity of the lines. And then I'm going to ink over the top of those. All right, so I'll move over here. And this guy should be pretty fun to ink. I got my airbrush. Don't want to ink with an airbrush. This should be interesting, too, because it's first thing in the morning. I really haven't drawn anything yet, so this is kind of my warm-up exercise at the same time. All right. And dinosaurs are have always been a favorite thing of mine for many, many years. I think last time I mentioned uh, grade school days where I started drawing animals and monsters and my friend Jim Belmore. Now those those monsters were kind of like, you know, Godzilla type stuff that I rarely got to see back in those days. Um, and of course the Godzilla back then was uh, the cheesy guy in a costume type of deal. Now you've got uh, CGI and super realistic looking looking monsters that uh, are uh, far and away better than anything that uh, they could have done back then. So I mean, they were, they were monster, violent and stuff, but it was kind of cheesy, you know. Not like the realistic stuff you got today. You got the actual cities being destroyed, and it's just more real today. Put it that way. I would 
imagine kids seeing the monster movies from back in my day. So today would just kind of roll their eyes and go, what is that? <laughs> Of course, today everyone has access to so many cartoons and stuff that they're not quite as, they don't have that special anticipation because you just, they're all over the place now. Where again, you know, when you're growing up, you never think you'd say back when I was a kid, but you get older and, and you do. But yeah, back when I was a kid, Saturday mornings, big time, looking forward to you know, Friday night, you just thought, all right, Saturday is coming. And there were even, even times where, um, you know, the, the next season of Saturday morning cartoons would start up. And so the Friday night, there would be this like promo event where they would announce the, the, the upcoming features for the next morning and the next season. So that was super exciting too. Okay. And um, again, my, my pencil lines here are, are kind of uh, a guideline and I'm inking in every once in a while, you'll see I'm inking in lines that I didn't indicate anything for before. So. I kind of redraw as I go. Something too with inks is you kind of have a, a light source in mind. And so some of the heavier line work versus the lighter line work is where those shadows would fall. So like right here, if you can see the cursor, um, underneath right here, I think would be more of a shadow area. So I make a thicker line. So Trying to keep it in, that sort of thing in, in mind when I'm inking. All right. And then And teeth. Put some big choppers on this guy. There's something about line variation that just is very pleasing to look at. Uh, if you've seen, there's a video that I did uh, for Reasons for Hope. You can find it on YouTube where I did a T-Rex drawing side by side, same, same thing. And one version of it I made, uh, the T-Rex with uniform lines and the, all the lines on it, I think for the most part were, um, were the same thickness. And then I re-inked that same T-Rex a second time. And I gave it line variation. So you have th nice thick and thin lines on it. And those thick and thin lines add quite a lot of interest to the drawing. And um, I've seen that I think play out in, in a lot of my other drawings too. For uh, for a few years, I did caricatures at the Creation Museum. 
And when I first started doing them, I had I had come across some a sale on some markers at a at a clearance warehouse type of art place. Actually, in um, let's see, in Illinois, we were traveling. We just happened upon this uh, Dick Blick warehouse in Gales. I think it's Galesburg, Illinois. And um, I was like a little kid in the candy store, and I came across the bin that had a ton of markers in it. And um, they were getting rid of the markers because they kept popping open. The, the little caps on the markers kept popping open. And the markers were 25 cents a piece. And I bought every one of the black markers. They were brush markers, so they had two sides to them. And uh, the one side was a brush, like a a marker. It was it was a marker, but it had a thin tip, and then it went fat towards the base of the or the felt part attached to the marker. And those those are great for drawing. And um, a lot of caricature artists use markers like that. And so I bought all of those markers, and that kept me going for quite a long time. I forget how many markers there were, but uh, I made out like a bandit on that. And, yeah, I had problems with uh, some of the markers popping open on me, too, so I had to kind of keep an eye on that. But um, I made a ton of money on, on those from those markers drawing caricatures at the museum. Then they ran out. And so instead of spending all the money that I should have spent, um, I just went cheap and um, purchased Sharpies and you, if you try real hard, you can get some line variation with, with Sharpies if the tip behaves itself. And so I drew caricatures with Sharpies for a, a number of years. And, um, you know, I didn't notice it right away, but looking back now, my audience for the for the marker or for the caricatures the numbers just went down and i kind of wondered what happened i had lines of people and all this interest before and then towards the end and i was even getting better at drawing the caricatures too i think the quality of the likenesses and my speed was increasing you know the more practice that you do and yet the numbers of people that I were drawing were less. I would come home on a Saturday of drawing caricatures and uh, the numbers were, were a lot different than the earlier days. And I was trying to piece together what was the key. And there might have been some other factors too, but I'm convinced that a huge part of it was the fact that I went with Sharpies and didn't go get a brush marker. The caricatures, like I said, the drawing, I think I was noticing the, the, the likenesses and, you know, like I said, the speed and stuff were, were better. But the line work didn't have that zing that my, uh, my less well-drawn caricatures from earlier had. And so I think that makes a difference. All right. Again, that underneath the belly part here would be darker. And so I'm making that line thicker. Let's get that nice, again, variation. 
think I might change my mind as far as the treatment of the belly because it a lot of people sometimes um will draw this section underneath it's uh you know if you notice alligators and crocodiles have a like a padded section underneath snakes I think do too yeah they well they do um but I think I'm gonna give it less less focus than the pencils indicate. So Saturday morning dinosaur. My all-time favorite cartoons on Saturday were um, were ones that actually weren't new. As as fun as it was to see the new announcements about what was going to be coming for the next season, um, Warner Brothers Looney Tunes cartoons were the best. Let's see. There, I think. There were all kinds of strange cartoons, and some of them were live action type things, too. Sigmund and the Sea Monster was really a strange feature. But you just sat there and watched all Saturday morning, no matter what came on. There was, you know, I, growing up, I had three three main channels. It was the big three, and then there was PBS, too. And uh, so you just sat there and enjoyed what they presented there were, were I didn't have cable most most of my growing up years put a little indication for some muscle there And there, speaking of live action too, there were um, it was one of my favorites was uh, Shazam and the live action where this. Uh, Young guy traveled around with uh, a guy that had his name was Mentor, <laughs> and um, anyway, so that was Billy Batson and Mentor. They traveled around to this this camper that had the Shazam symbol on the front of it, which is funny. And anyway, then he uh, would get into trouble, and you know, they kind of run around the country or whatever, and do good things and there would be a crisis that would happen and he would you know cry out shazam and then he would turn into captain marvel which is different from the other captain marvel okay well i think we've got most of the inks for the for the t-rex accomplished so what i'm going to do now is um Fact, let me check the outside of this because I can make a selection and then 
instead of tracing the whole outside of it with my lasso tool, I can, um, there we go, do that sort of selection and then inverse. So now I've reversed it and then I can, um, let's see, select and then I can modify and I can contract that just a little bit, you know, two, two is fine. So now what I've done is I've created a shape that I can put my color in. So I'm going to label that on the layer inks. I'm going to make a one underneath and this will be my color layer. And um, let's see, what color should we make the dinosaur? I was kind of fooling around with just having some fun and doing something not usual at all and making them purple. Well, you know, on second thought, Barney's purple, and I don't want people calling this Barney, so let's uh, let's go away from purple. Um <laughs> I don't want to do green either because that's like everyone goes make 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 it green. I draw I drew a Leviathan for Answers in Genesis years and years ago, and um, before I had gotten to the color stage, one of the one of the um, people came to me and said, "Make it green." Okay, so lizards are green. Dinosaurs must be green. Green was the color, uh, so I just made it green. All right, well, maybe, um, we'll go with red. Okay, maybe more of a red. And make sure that's all filled in right. Looks good. All right, so now I'm gonna um, lock that layer. Again, I like showing this to people. Um, I'm going to select blue here, and just to show you what I did, for those of you that aren't familiar with Photoshop, I have uh, I have the inks on one layer, and then right underneath that I have the color layer. So if, um, and, and then I've locked that color layer, so I can only paint where there's color anywhere else on that particular layer that there's no color, I can't paint. So I'm going to draw a stroke from the upper left, or upper right, down through the creature, and you can only see that that stroke painted where there's color. And that's exactly what I want to happen here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that uh, color that I just painted with, uh, the red-orange-ish color. And um, I'm going to make it a little different, a little darker version of that color. I'm going to use my airbrush tool. And uh, I'm going to lessen the opacity. <clears throat> and then again, I'm going to start coloring this as if there's a light source in the upper right hand corner. So in my mind, I'm trying to figure out where the shadows would be if the light source was up there. So the bright side of the dinosaur would be the areas that are closer to the light source. And then those areas that are further away would be the ones in shadow and so that's that's where i'm gonna start and that's a little too less on the opacity so let's up that a little bit there we go Figure out. That's a fun exercise, by the way, helping you think in three dimensions. Where are the shadows going to be? And I, I used reference a little bit, some um, image that was created by somebody for the T-Rex the to kind of base mine on. And again, I, I exaggerated sections of it, so it's clearly not anything that I, you know, traced or anything. But... Um, I'm not looking at anything now, so I'm just kind of in my mind thinking about where all the shadows 
would be and where the highlights would be and and I used to do a demonstration of this sort of thing very quick when I worked at Answers in Genesis and people would come through for a tour I loved uh, just showing them a little bit of what I do and and I had some image files that were all ready for demonstration purposes and uh, I think I've shared this before in other videos but um, it would blow me away after the after their visit was over days and days later I would get emails and I would get letters and that sort of stuff cards with uh, thank yous, people expressing, you know, thank you for showing us what you did. Our kids thought that was the highlight of the museum. And I am not joking about that. That's what they said. And I, I can think back on days when I, you know, met artists and got to see professionals and people that I looked up to type of thing. It just makes a big impression on you. So I was happy to do that. As odd as it is for me to think that someone would think that way about me. So you see the form is starting to take shape and we'll um, keep darkening it a little bit and then I shrink the size of my airbrush so I'm getting more specific. So I start out with a lighter shadow color and I have a bigger airbrush and then as I darken that that color I get a smaller 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 brush so that I'm getting more and more specific in what I'm coloring I think that's a nice way to uh, to flesh out the the detail in a sense We're going to put some other other kinds of detail in here in a little bit, but um, then you got to figure out where the harder shadows would be too. So the the round forms start gradually getting darker as the as the mass of whatever it is starts turning away from the light source. Um, but then there's those areas that are, are cast shadows. Um, so you got to figure out what those are too. Start getting a grasp on those. Your, your images will start taking on a new life. And um, it's, a, it's a kind of a brain exercise, but it can be relaxing too. Because it's, it's fun. Some people color, you know, buy coloring books and they just color for fun. I think this would be sort of the same type of thing where you're doing this activity. And uh, the more that you do it, the better you get at it, of course, like anything. But if you can make it fun, that is a huge key, I think, to doing really good artwork. So my, my advice and my encouragement is to you know, work hard and do those things you have to do, but uh, don't lose the fun. And uh, I know that there's, there have been times in my career where I've lost the fun 
And boy, you can sure tell. Art is so much easier, like anything, um, when you look forward to it. I think there's just much more of a obvious, creative zing <laughs> to your images and your artwork if if it's um if it has some fun in it, something that you like about it. There we go. We're a little darker. Just some of the darker areas. <clears throat> and then those teeth, of course the teeth, now I can make a selection for those. And uh, make those the right color. Although the inside of the mouth is going to be colored at the same time, I have to redraw the tongue. Re repaint it. All right. And I can make. Actually, I'm going to make them just a little off, <clears throat> a little off white. If you look at teeth, they really aren't white. White. There we go. I missed a little bit of that one. I was making my selection, so let's correct that. And we're going to do that with a harder edge brush. Oops. What happened there? Oh, I think that's an opacity problem. There we go. Now, sometimes when you use a lower opacity, which means that um, if it's 100% opaque, it means you can't see through it. But if you lower that, then all of a sudden you can start seeing through what you're painting. And that can affect your colors. So you got to be careful about that when you're when you're painting. And then I'm going to go back to some, uh, like a red color for the tongue inside the mouth. And um, of, of course, I'm painting in real time here. <clears throat> Um, I guess you can kind of see why some artists uh, just paint or they, they they record their paintings and then they speed the video up so that you, the, watch, the viewer, doesn't have to sit there for however long it takes the thing to be painted in real time. Now, the, uh, the teeth on the other side, uh, keeping in mind where the light source is, would be a little darker on the other side. So um, I'm going to, um, I guess we'll go back to the airbrush tool. And I'm going to paint on the opposites, uh, on the inside teeth first. And keeping in mind that an edge of that tooth would be more exposed to the light than the other side. So that one front edge but inside the mouth, that tooth would be darker. I'll give it a, a feel of roundness a little bit.
inside the mouth, less uh, less exposure to that light source. And then the same for the bottom teeth. Keeping in mind where that light source is. And then um, for the front teeth, we've got more of a shadow edge on the just the one the one side a little bit. There's more light is hitting that tooth. Not so much in the shade like the other ones. And I'm starting light on the bottom, so I have a. Uh, a brush that is pressure sensitive and uh, so it'll give me a thin line on the bottom and then a little wider stroke up on top if I push harder as I as I progress so I start light and then push harder and then it follows the form of the tooth I'm doing the same here except the opposite. Well, I'm lighter, pushing lighter at the top, so it's thinner, and then getting a fatter stroke on the, on the way down. And if you think the shadow makes these look cool, and uh, speaking of shadows, I need to, um, a bit of a shadow on the top there too because the the thickness of the lip or whatever is above the teeth would would show a it'd be like a cast shadow there too and thinking all these things through in your mind but there would also be a highlight and the highlight i think is the shadows are fun. Highlights are fun too. Not uh, fun. And so you can make the you can make the image really pop by having that middle color that I started out with, adding shadow. And uh And that highlight accent of where the where the light source is hitting the most, and uh, those three things will really make something sing. highlights there hey what do you think nice pair of teeth huh nice set of teeth something else I could do is at this point since we're not using them anymore I'll make the that sketch layer go away And now we're going to color the eye. And um, being that it's red, orange, like a yellow eye, which I've seen plenty of snakes and reptiles that have a, a similar color scheme. And they, I mean, green ones or whatever, have yellow eyes. And so I think yellow eyes are cool. And that's what a lot of illustrators do is they base their color schemes on creatures that we don't necessarily see on Earth anymore. They use um, creatures that we do know about. And that's a, a reasonable 
type of guesswork. Doesn't mean you got it right, but it looks more, what is it, plausible? Things that are already being used in nature that God has uh, already designed into creatures. So in a way, it's kind of a compliment to God, whether the person knows it or not. The original designers' designs are being honored by being repeated on other creatures. That's the way I like to think about it. A little reflection in the eye there. And those horns on the nose that were just kind of a bonus feature that I added. Um, maybe some of the accents on this dinosaur are yellow too. In fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trace those. I can color them all in one shot. There we go. Mark the brush size. And uh, I think I'll put a highlight of yellow on them. Oh, you know what? That is on the ink layer, which is not what I wanted. But Photoshop has a thing called history. And so I can go in my history palette, back that up. So now I'm right where I want to be, and I can move that down to the color layer where it should have been in the first place. So people think that just because it's on the computer, means that you can push buttons and boom, it just happens. They, they have this, computers make things instant and faster. Well, it's not, it's not for pushing buttons and making things happen, but for things like that, where you, I just made a mistake and uh, then I could go back and undo it and then start over again. That's the part that is a, t a major time saver and life saver in a sense too. So I'm keeping, oh, 3%, that's way too little. All right, go up to third, no, 26. There we go. Sometimes if you reduce the opacity down to this little dinky number, you can just start rendering away and you hardly see anything happen because you're your opacity is so low. All right, I like that. That looks good. And then um, I think I'll do the same to the claws too. In fact, there's uh, some areas here in the color that should not exist. So we'll take those out. That's one right there. I thought I saw another one someplace. Is there another one? Let me back up. <laughs> it's traveling all over the, the dinosaur. Kind of like the first Star Trek movie that came out. They did this like a 10, oh, there it is. Like a 10, 15 minute tour of the Enterprise. Just kind of showing it off. It seemed like 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't, but it just was so ridiculously long. But for those of you that have seen that movie, all right, now we're going to do the uh, the claws again. Same as I did before, so we'll up the opacity. Lower the brush size. Usually I go for the, uh, the highlight last. 
but in this instance, I'm doing it first, so kind of background or backwards, but uh, it'll give me the desired effect. And I can do this to add a little texture interest to the claw. Like he's been using it and it's kind of roughed up a bit, or it has more of a like a bone feel or One danger with the airbrush tool is that you make things look too perfect and smooth and which the my, the dinosaur right now is too much that way. So I'll be working on that. But uh, I mean, airbrushes are great. You just got to watch out for this. It looks like it's so smooth, perfect plastic figurine or something. Photoshop used to have the, speaking of perfect and plastic, Photoshop used to have this really perfectly round airbrush that I actually found hand, very handy for some things. And, um, I can't, they don't have that anymore. Unless I'm missing something. So if there's someone out there that's watching this that knows Photoshop and you know what I'm talking about, you can let me know. Because the, the, the one that I use now, the photo or the airbrush that I use is this one, and it's pressure sensitive in a different way than that original one was. And so there's some things that uh, I really can't do anymore because the, the tool has changed. And I suppose I could look into making my own brush which some artists do, and that's, that's something that's very cool about Photoshop, is you can make your own brushes. I guess you can do that for lots of other programs too, but uh, I really need to learn how to do that. Of course, you can buy lots of brushes from other people that, have, that know how to do that too. All right, let's go back over to this other foot and do the same thing so that I can not have to switch brush sizes so much. All right. Usually when I'm drawing stuff like this, I'll have a... Uh, something going on in the background to kind of keep your brain occupied because this um, this is kind of like a lower brain activity, I consider it. Or you don't have to think real a lot. In, in fact, the word processing part of your brain is really not being used at all. And, um, and so I like to have TV shows on or movies or sermons or podcasts or audiobooks, whatever the, whatever I want to listen to. And you might think, well, how can you watch a movie or watch a TV show when you're drawing? Well, um, it's helpful to not watch something that you've not seen before. Because then all you have to do is kind of glance over every once in a while for context. And uh, you, you really don't have to watch the show. You listen to it with um, visual orientation enhancement glances. <laughs> How's that for sounding intelligent? All right. So 
this is a fiery T-Rex. Did a T-Rex head not too long ago, one of my videos that has a similar color scheme to it. So there he is. Um, let's, um, there, there's numerous ways to paint scales if I wanted to do that sort of thing. So I'm going to just choose an easy one. And uh, we're going to pick a darker version. Actually, this doesn't really matter right now, but um, on another layer, I'm going to make another layer here. I'm going to call that scales. And this is kind of a cool thing, too. Um, again, the tools in Photoshop, the more that you get to know them, the more you can do with them. And so I'm going to make some scales on the dinosaur. Let's make a 100% opacity. And then, yeah, okay, so. And I'm not going to draw all the scales. I mean, I'd be here all day long. And I've done that before. <laughs> so just kind of a dot pattern on the dinosaur. Just in different sections. Again, I'm trying to orient these two to be what the shape, kind of communicate what the shape of the dinosaur would be. So I put down this perfectly round circle pattern, it would look wrong. But if I try to uh, think, what would a circle look like laying on th that this particular section of the dinosaur? then you can communicate some shape just by the, the shape of the circles, the this, this, this scales. So this, the shapes that I'm laying down here are not something Photoshop is doing for me. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to use my stylus to paint the shapes that I want. And this is all the same color, which is kind of fun. If you notice, I'm painting on a lighter section here. And so you've got that nice contrast with the same color. If I paint somewhere darker, all of a sudden it looks like I'm painting lighter. And that's just the difference in color of the surface I'm painting on. And again, this is another one of those, it can be very relaxing activities. We'll give a sense of some scale activity over here. Sometimes you'll see artists that um, We'll make a, a, like a building type of thing, like a brick building. And they will not draw every brick on the building. They'll just indicate a brick here, a brick there type of thing. And then when you look at it, you don't see anything wrong with it. You see, okay, this is a brick wall. And the other thing, too, is that you don't want people, you know, caught up with all the detail. If something's not the main part of your picture, save the detail for where you want the eyes to go. And then, now the face of the T-Rex, of course, is the like the showpiece. So I like to do stuff like this. Give kind of a a shape to those little little parts. Like the 
flare of the nose if the T-Rex had a such thing. Probably not, but mine does because I like that. <laughs> and I'm the one making this. But these little scale shapes can, done correctly, can add a real needed bit of interest. The other thing about scales, too, is they are a grid, an orderly grid. Now, some of the scales that I've drawn so far back on the body haven't had too much of an ordered look. And that can be okay. But I'm trying to draw the scales on the face that are more important in more of an orderly fashion. That's why reptiles in particular in particular, are cool animals to look like, or not to look like, but to look at. Um, the The grid pattern of the scales tells you very well what the shape of the animal is. If you look at a, a mammal with fur on it, now zebras, again, that those uh, those lines go over the form of the animal and tell you what the, the shape of the, the creature is. And um, even more so on, on reptiles. But it's less clear what, a, what an animal looks like without that grid pattern. Not that you can't see the shape and the form in more of a general way, but um, Look at some lizard pictures and look at some uh, snakes and other things that have that grid, sort of a grid or a, it's a, it's a pattern that just really informs you of what that creature looks like. And that's part of the reason why they look so cool is because you can, you can really see very clearly what the what the shape of that animal is, what direction the forms are going in, whether they're coming at you or going back or, you know. Now in a little bit here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something to these scales. I'm gonna do a couple things that are gonna help make these things live right on this dinosaur. Maybe I've gotten away from my orderly pattern here, but uh, sometimes scales have more of a variety of shape to them, but a lot of the times they're more uniform in size and shape. I mean, these scales look okay, but you can tell that I'm using the same color. And so whatever color I'm putting them on, they look, they look different. And they don't necessarily live well in the context of the color that I'm putting them on. If you really wanna make them zing, and, and belong where they are. Stay tuned for that little secret. And uh, the, this looks kind of tedious, and it sort of is, but like I said, it can be very relaxing. <clears throat> some bigger scales on some of the bigger parts of the body. There's some. 
That's another thing you can do too, is kind of follow the form around. And that helps kind of direct the eye and give it a form, a shape. And there's <clears throat> that sort of thing on the toes a lot of the time. You'll even see this sort of thing on birds, but I'm not trying to say this is a bird at all. Or was ever related to a bird, because dinosaurs and birds are two different things in so many ways. Biblically, of course, uh, dinosaurs were created on day, creation day six, being land animals. Birds came before dinosaurs because they were created on day five. <clears throat> so that's just another, another one of those Evolution and the Bible don't fit together type of things. All right. I think that's that's going to do it for our purposes here. And uh, so what I'm going to do with the scales to help them live better on the dinosaur is um, I'm going to lock their layer so I can only paint on the scales themselves. And then... I am going to uh, zoom in a little bit here so I can see what I'm doing. But a good example to show you what I am talking about is take my color. All right. And then um, I want to pick a darker version of that scale color. And I'm going to make sure I have my airbrush on. And I'm going to just knock back the opacity a little bit. Increase the size of the airbrush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to adjust the, the color of the, the scales according to the shadow area that they're on. And so you'll see that now those scales that were in the darker area of the of the t-rex the scales that didn't stand out so much because the color of the background that they're on the area was darker than actually the scale color now those scales are starting to pop some more so that's going to enhance the the communication of the form. I'm not coloring all this, all the scales, but uh, those that are in darker shadow. Get the shadow scale treatment. And that's cool enough all by itself. But there's one other thing that you can do that really helps enhance the the scale lives on this creature type of thing. And I want to do that in just a little bit. I'm kind of wondering if anybody out there that's watching this can guess what that is. What is that thing that I want to do, that one extra little touch that I want to add to the scales that's going to help them live better? on the T-Rex. All right, and then, um, and this is kind of one of those push button, make it happen type of thing, which there are a few of those, but not, I think not as many as most people would think, non-artists that don't use Photoshop. I'm gonna knock back the opacity of the scale layer itself. And so then the background color that those scales is on is actually going to show through 
the scales a little bit more and it's going to meld the scale layer into the, the layer that they're on. And so that really, really helps those two things become one. So I can, I could knock it way back like that, but that's too light. And so I'm going to bring it forward. And all of a sudden, those scales that kind of were some kind of floating apart of the, apart from the dinosaur, now become part of the dinosaur itself. And then, <laughs> back to the highlights. You can uh, you can add some highlights to the dinosaur too. I'm, I'm not going to get too carried away with this, but uh, I'm going to add some highlights to some more important scales. Put it that way. And I'm actually going to uh, pick a harder edge brush for this. And uh, so, uh, scale layer. Um, let's see. Again, this is like really fine detail, but uh, if I wanted to do this to all the scales, I could. But um, I would really be taking way too much time to do that. I'm just going to highlight some of the... I see how that gives some life to those scales too. <clears throat> you want to be careful with that though because you can you can communicate something that may not be true it might give your creature or whatever you're highlighting a feel of like sliminess it's possible so you gotta you gotta be careful on how you do the highlights but uh And then I'm going to go back in here in a little bit and add some other details with some lighter lines. So highlights are fun. You can just sit there and do this all day long. So that's, that's cool. I like that. Oh, the one around the eyes needs some highlighting. So the eyes are an interesting area to look at. Yeah, it looks like we have a couple. Uh, well, good morning, my friend Jeff Jeffrey from Canada. I was just looking at your photos the other day from your last trip to Can or to the Ark Encounter that we were there. You had your little model, three D. 3D image of yourself. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to add some other interest again, hopefully very easily. And uh, I'm trying to get my eyedropper tool. There we go. I'll pick a version of that color. And uh, then I'm going to just make some line work. But I want to put that on its own layer too. Add some uh, more subtle detail. Color in that ear hole there. I 
Oh, there it should be darker. It's in the shadow. Let's up the darkness on that a particular area. There we go. In fact, underneath there. Again, the eyes are a very, very important part. You can add some lighter scales. All right, let's back this up. And I wanna add some uh, other highlights to help make this guy pop some more. Over here, um, I want to do this on its own layer. I can make a bazillion layers on dino on whatever I'm doing. Sometimes I get a little carried away. I think the layering, but uh, it helps make me feel secure, <laughs> knowing that I can undo that very easily if it's on its own layer. And I need a lighter color that's not quite doing it for me. There we go. So the light is really hitting this guy right there. You know, I just thought of another method to add some zing very quickly. Again, one of those computer tricks that uh, I think would help speed things up a little bit as far as, you know, making a big difference on this creature. And so I'm going to add add something that I hadn't intended on doing here in a little bit. So it looks a little plain as far as uh, he's just red with scales on him. But if I wanted an easy way to add some color variety to The whole creature I can use a part of him that has already been done and um, I can manipulate that to uh, to help serve my purpose Let's back that up. All right, so that that light, uh, you might not see it so much um, here, but if I make a layer underneath all this, and um, say I wanted to do, you know, some sort of a a background, like a sky type of thing, you'll see me do this in some videos. If I pop in a blue sky and that that uh, highlight line that I put around there will make more it'll mean more because you can see the the edge here 
has more contrast from the blue versus the white background that it had been on. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the T-Rex color section and um, say I want to add some stripes. We'll, we'll do that. That'll be fun. I'm going to add some striping. But again, I want that those stripes to live on the dinosaur. I don't want to have something that, that's going to look like it doesn't belong. And... Um, so I'm going to draw these stripes using my selection tool. I think for a long time learning Photoshop I saw some of these Photoshop uh, methods as like artif artificial, that's not art type of thing, that's a computer trick. And I think I kind of resisted them. But it's, it's just a tool, an ability that your computer gives you. It's not cheating, it's not dishonest. It's just, again, using an aspect of what your computer can do to achieve your purposes as an artist. So don't think of it as cheating so much. So what I've done here is I've selected a section of that, that color area, that color layer. Now I'm going to hit on my computer, it's Command J or uh, on a commute. Uh, I forget what the key is called on, the, on a PC, but I want to make that selection jump off the page. And so to show you what I just did, I'm going to make the color layer disappear for a second. And you're going to see the areas that I've selected out of that color layer. Those are, that's going to be what's left. Okay. So, so that's what I have, but you can't see it because it's the same color as the, uh, as the color below it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to adjust, make an adjustment, and I'm going to change the um, the color a little bit on that particular selection. We can kind of fool around with it. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yellow. And this is another part of the uh, being on computer that's fun because I can start making all kinds of trial and error type things. And so, let's see that one. Let's see. And then if you don't like any of them, you can just cancel and go back. There's the purple that I started out with. Uh, I've always liked red and blue together. Of course, those two do go together well. Let's see. Let's cancel that. And I'm going to go back up and make an adjustment on the color balance. That's okay. That's what I wanted. I think you got a lot more, uh, there's so many palettes in Photoshop. And that, that was another thing that originally scared me a lot was too many options, ah. But my advice to those starting out is just pick, pick one, one thing and then go with it. Learn how to use that one thing and then uh, Learn another, get comfortable with that, pick something else, and go with that. And part of the magic of doing this too is that whatever I'm doing, again, is based on a layer that already lives on the dinosaur. So if you got your colors right, 
this kind of naturally fits on the dinosaur, the form of the creature or whatever you're doing naturally right away anyway. All right, let's see. Sort of a gold. I think we're going to go with that, and then I'm going to I'm going to bump that up a little bit. Maybe it's the brightness. Another layer that I like a lot. There we go. And see, it's already shaded. Like I said before, it lives on the dinosaur. And and just it's fun to create stuff and then just kind of experiment around and uh, see if you can get the look that you want. There's so many ways to do those things. And then a little, again, a little shorthand type of thing that I do for backgrounds. And we'll just do this and finish this guy up. Is uh, I'll take the selection tool and then draw like a palm tree in the background. And then I'm going to add to this selection. And then I'm um, going to add to the selection again. And I'm not going to draw through the dinosaur because this is kind of a waste of time. I'll continue on the other side. Kind of drawing an indication of some foliage type of thing. And I want to remove some of that sky because it's going down too far. More shrubbery. Well, not really shrubs, but grasses and some things like that on a closer layer. And maybe I'll do another palm tree here. Don't want to touch the dinosaur though. Okay. Maybe another smaller one down here just for interest. that selection continues as it should there and oh, let's make this go off the edge there we go and now all I do is take my bucket well I'm gonna select a green and it's not important that you get that completely right right off the bat just so that it stands out all right bucket tool and then fill it and then I want to take and uh, remove that section of the sky that's kind of leaking out underneath. There we go. And then, uh, oh, that palm tree doesn't look too healthy. Let's fix that. Correct the shapes that I need to correct. Um, no, oh, my opacity's down. There we go. Okay. That's one thing about Photoshop. You're always running back and forth and fixing different opacities and selecting different brushes and colors. And so there's a lot to juggle sometimes. All right. Fix that tree shape. And actually, I want to remove part of that. I think it's too thick up on the top. There we go. There, that's better. And um, now I'm going to do one last little shape that's added here. Just a indication of shadow for the dinosaur. And uh, 
we'll do just um, black and then I'll lighten the opacity and make it gray. Boom, now he's on the ground, which helps orient that a lot. And then um, knocking back the opacity of the shadow. There. Yeah, that looks good right there. And uh, I was going to do, oh, then the other thing I can do for the background to add a little interest to that is um, now it's one flat color, which is okay. But you can add some interest to it by locking the shape. And then I want to select that color for both the front and back palette there in Photoshop. And then I'm going to make a lighter version. There we go. And then I'm going to pick not the bucket tool, but the gradient tool. And I'm going to add a gradient to that. That one doesn't work real well. That doesn't work real well either. So what you do is you go back into your lighter color and you uh, fix that. And then <laughs> for the darker one, make that even darker. I was getting kind of lost in the blue. So let's give that a try. Hey, anyway, I think that works well. It just adds a little little spark to it. And then the last thing you do when you do a drawing or a painting or an illustration, your name. So we'll uh, put mine up here. Um, and uh, I've got that little banner going on the bottom for my website, danletha.com. So check that out. Oops. Well, my brush is not behaving. Oops. Sometimes the computer doesn't kind of keep up with uh, the brush strokes. There we go. And it is November. So there we are. The dinosaur is finished. And I have uh, had fun doing a little Saturday morning cartoon action today. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, join me for future videos, hopefully on Saturdays and other days too. And uh, check out my website. You can find me on Facebook at uh, Dan Letha Cartoonist Illustrator. And I would appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. And even the little bell there will tell you when I'm doing um, these live broadcasts. You'll instantly know when that's happening. So thanks for watching and have a great day.